Hi everybody, my name is Jim with Full Moon Adventure Club and I am very excited because I have in my possession an Energy Flex. Um, I finally got my hands on a prototype and um, it's for a lot of us we've been waiting almost a year uh, to get our hands on these guys because of COVID slowing down the production process and all kinds of stuff. It's been delayed quite a bit, but I have my hands on the Energy Flex prototype. It is real, it is here, and we're gonna check it out today, so I'm really happy about that. For those of you that don't know, have not heard anything about this guy, I do a video that explains the technical specifications, how the system works, all the different modules, blah, blah, blah. Up top, I'll put a card up there so you can go over to that video if you're interested. I'm not gonna be going over the specifications today in this video. If you end up being interested in getting one of these guys, there's a link down below that will send you over to their website. And if they have any discount codes, coupons, anything like that, my link down below will get you the absolute best price on the internet. So um, you can use that if you're interested in more information. Now today we're gonna be putting it through a lot of really cool tests and I'm just gonna jump right into them because we have a lot to cover. Um, and I did all these separately where I was talking and going through the entire process and covering a lot of detail. That would have made this video an hour long. So I'm gonna voice over uh, the results of all these and it'll be really cool and condensed and that way we can get to all this information as quickly as possible. So let's jump right into it right now. Okay, so what we're gonna test first is we're gonna hook up this 1500 watt space heater and uh, have a little display timer there. You can see that it, we're pulling 1500 watts from the battery right now and the estimated runtime is 41 minutes. And after we conduct the experiment, we actually end up running for 42 minutes. And so that was pretty spot on. You can see me turning on the generator on, or the uh, heater on low here. And then when I ramp that up to 1500 watts, um, you can see that runtime is at 43 minutes. And when we complete the test, it is indeed uh, at 10% and we ran for 42 minutes. So that's pretty darn accurate. I like that a lot. Keep in mind that what's being displayed right there is the power coming out of the battery itself, not the power that's being drawn at the plug. Um, so the, the meter that you see right there is coming out of the battery and you're gonna lose a little bit through wiring and through the inverter and uh, different stuff like that. So that's what that watt meter is, but I wanted to make sure we were actually gonna be able to get 1500 watts from the plug so I hooked up a watt meter, I hooked up another heater, ran them both on low, and you can see the display says we're pulling about 2200 watts out of the battery, when in fact we're pulling about 1580 watts from the plug. And you can see that uh, when I focus here right there, 1.57 is 1570 watts, and it ran that test for 30 minutes. So it does indeed provide 1500 watts continuous watts at the plug through the entire uh, amount of power you have in the battery. So that was very impressive and a definite win there. They have fixed that issue. I also had a power outage a few days ago when we had an unexpected heavy snow and it did knock down the power. So I thought what a better opportunity than to try out the flex right now. You can see my meter is not lit up because the power was actually off. And I do have a generator system and a transfer switch hooked up outside the house. So I plugged in an extension cord turned off grid power and switched to generator power. And now I'm gonna plug in the other side of that extension cord into the Energy Flex and start up my entire house. I tried to unplug and turn off everything that I could think to do at first, so I didn't overload it. You can see we went up to about 900 watts and it came back down to 400 watts. Now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and turn on, you know, the rest of the house is all lit up. I have my uh, Lexus going, my refrigerator has power. And so the basics are covered and I do have lights and all that good stuff now if I need any of them. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm kind of look right here, we're at about 450 watts or something. I'm gonna turn on my entertainment center, which is a lot of stuff, subwoofers and receivers and uh, amplifiers and my router and my TV and a fire stick. And that jumped us up to about 534 watts. And so now that I have internet and TV, I'm gonna go ahead and just see how long this powers the entire house kind of on minimal power, uh, watching the TV and all of that stuff, which is still drawing 530 watts and we're gonna see if it makes it until the power comes back on. And uh, let's check it out. I think it's pretty cool I'm watching Game of Thrones during the power outage and full surround sound. I have it muted right now, of course. But yeah, the entire house is just running off the, uh, the flex over there. I also took my original Kodiak and gave it to a neighbor to run their oxygen machine and the Apex to my other neighbor so she could keep working online uh, doing her archeology span research and stuff like that. So I'm still loving these and they're both still working great. So I'm really excited about the new Flex and I'm gonna hold on to that one so I can keep watching Game of Thrones. 
So that was a lot of fun during the power outage. The uh, power came back on after about an hour and a half, but I didn't notice because I was running off the flex. We ended up making it about two and a half hours by judging by my clock and stuff that I timed. And uh, that was running the refrigerator. There were a lot of power draw, vampires in the entire house and different things going on. Um, but you could obviously extend this by hours and hours if you were just running a few select things. Obviously I was hooked up to the whole house. There was a lot of power draw, but two and a half hours is pretty impressive. Let's do some loads of laundry. So you can see here, nothing happens. And I turn on the power, turn on the uh, front loading LG washing machine. I decided to do my first load with solar plugged in. You can see the solar counter, counter going up. I had 400 Watts of solar plugged in. It was a cloudy day. So I only got about 220 Watts out of all four panels, but I left those plugged in and ran it through an entire cycle. And once I was done with that cycle, we ended up at 96%. And if I'd had full sun, that means you could do laundry all day, as many loads as you wanted, you know? So I think that's pretty cool. Um, then I'm gonna run a, the same test, but without solar, 100% on the battery. And we let that run. You can see it moving around with the spin cycle there. Um, but when we zoom in at the end of that first load, you can see that we're at about 82%. So if you do the math on that, we could probably do four, maybe even five loads of laundry off a single battery, which is very impressive. Why don't we jump outside and I'll show you a different test where I hook up lots of different electronics. Okay, so I wanted to show you all the crazy things that you can actually run off this guy. Um, well, while you're doing anything really, and we're gonna start on the left. We have a 32 inch flat screen TV, smart TV that is hooked up to the internet, playing Netflix right there. And we also have a six amp hour Ryobi battery that's charging. All of my drone batteries, are charging. We also have this Ryzen jetpack that provides internet for us. So that's on and charging. We have all these batteries, double A's, nine volts, triple A's, also two lithium batteries for our flashlights. A Galaxy S9 Plus is charging right there. I also have this old flip phone right here that's charging, has a lithium battery inside. We keep this around for camping and stuff. A lot of people don't know this, but every phone will work for 911 even if it's not connected to a plan. So that's a little tip for you. We also have a GoPro Hero 7, a GoPro Fusion camera that's charging as well. We have a Fire TV tablet up there, and we have batteries for our headlamps and flashlights going. We also have a small 12 volt DC frying pan, and we also have some, we have a Dremel here. If we wanted to run that, we sure could. It's very cool. We have a coffee maker going as well. And that's actually brewing coffee for us. So when that gets going, that'll we'll have some coffee there as well. That's been turned on for a few. You have this Dometic uh, cooler and that's plugged in as well. You can keep food warm or cold with that guy. We have it set to cool right now. And we also have this nice big laptop connected to the internet as well. And it is charging also. So I think that's very, very cool that we have all this stuff going and uh, to prove the, uh, the little skillet is on here, we're even gonna cook a little egg for you. So I'll pull the lid off of that. Nice. So we'll let that cook for a little bit. And we just plug that in so it's probably gotta heat up a little bit. And we're brewing coffee and all kinds of stuff. So that's just a ridiculous amount of electronics that we have plugged in. You can hook up lights or anything else. Um, and it's just a ton of things that you can plug in and run with this guy and we're only running at about 300 watts and depending on what stuff is actually kicked on and doing stuff that went up to about 400 watts and it can run that for hours right now it's saying we can run all this stuff for about three hours and that's not connected to solar or anything else so I think that's very cool I also wanted to show you guys that if you do want to plug in more plugs than you have room for and there's a lot of plugs for a lot of different accessories in here then you can actually use one of these surge protectors like I have, and that adds extra USB ports and tons of extra plugs. And this guy will run all of it, no problem at all. So I think that's just incredibly cool that all this stuff is going for us. And you can turn pretty much the DC stuff off if you'd like to. You can turn that stuff back on. And you can turn off the AC stuff that's running the uh, TVs and laptops and everything else and you're pretty much good to go. I mean, this is some serious glamping, granted, but it's still very impressive that it's able to run all of these different devices. I've got my drone remote charging as well. It's just a ton of stuff. To be honest, I just about ran out of all my electronics. So 
I think that's a pretty darn cool demonstration. And uh, we'll show you when we have our coffee brewed. And we can see our eggs starting to warm up there, so that's pretty cool. Okay, so we gave it a little bit of time here. Our egg is cooking nicely. And we are making coffee here. Brews a little bit slow, but you can see it in there. And so that's really, really cool. We're running all of this stuff, the cooler, all of these batteries, lights, phones, pretty much all the little electronic gadgets I could get my hands off of, um, as well as Netflix and TVs and everything else, which is very cool. And uh, I just think that's really neat, running at 500 watts. And if that's not glamping, I don't know what is. Well, there you go. I hope you enjoyed all those really cool tests. I'm really happy that their, their inverter is able to power 1500 watts at the plug continuously throughout uh, the power of however many batteries you decide to attach to this guy. So I think that's really, really cool that they upgraded all of that. Um, the build quality seems very, very sturdy. I'm not gonna go into a full review here on pros and cons because I'm gonna be sipping, shipping this one back and they're gonna be shipping me one that's uh, a production model one that's gonna be just like the one that all of you are gonna get. Um, this is a prototype, as I said, so I don't see the point in actually giving it pros and cons yet because they might change firmware a little bit or tweak something here or there. And I wanna make sure that I'm reviewing the exact model that all of you have. So I just wanted to put the, um, the prototype through the test and give us a first look at this guy and I, I was very, very happy with it. I think it's really cool. I'm really relieved that after so much time, it looks like they're gonna they're gonna knock it out of the park with a really good unit here. So I'm really happy about that. I have another video where I actually run my entire house at night and go over all the different plugs and really push it over the top too. I'll put a card up top if you wanna check out that video. It's a lot of fun and um, that's pretty darn neat. Um, there's nothing really glaringly bad that I've noticed with this unit. I love that it has you know wattage coming in for solar, wattage going out that you're using from the battery. Um, it takes a ton of solar and you can add as much solar as you want. It takes parallel, it takes series. You can um, charge it with solar as well as, uh, you know, a wall charger. So you can just dump power into this guy and charge your battery up in like an hour if you've got it all maxed out with like three different solar arrays if you buy the MPPT charge controller. And I love that, you know, it works for anybody's solar panels now. So if you have 500 watts of somebody else's solar panels, you can use them on this. That was really cool of them to do. It opens up a lot of opportunities for us. They can be in parallel or they can be in series. I think that's great. Their charge controller is really efficient, MPPT charge controller, and it takes anybody's solar panels and uh, any configuration. So I think that's really, really cool. Adding all the batteries you want. Now you have tons of battery expansion, um, which is fantastic because if the more batteries you have hooked up at one time, they're gonna all share the load of whatever you're powering. And so they will all drain slower because of it. And that'll give you lots and lots more cycles. It'll really take care of those batteries. So that's really, really cool. Um, and there's just a lot of things that I really think are great about the unit. The build quality seems bulletproof. And I'm also excited that we're gonna be able to use this flex battery for our old Kodiaks and Apexes, for those of us that have those, because mine are still fantastic units. They're all still working great. And now finally we can expand with a lithium battery to those units with an adapter. And I'll be trying to get one of those and show you guys that as well. So I hope you enjoyed it. I'm not gonna call this a review. It's more of a teaser review just because I don't have the production model yet but it's supposed to be almost identical to this one, maybe different firmware and maybe a tweak here or there, but I wanna save my review for that. So I, I review the same thing that you guys have, but um, I think we can all breathe a little sigh of relief knowing that it is coming, it is on its way, it does exist. And um, it looks like they did a really good job putting it all together. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. If you're interested, click the link down below to pick one of these guys up or go to their website and get more information. Um, oh, and they are still running kind of a battery warranty. At first they were doing full replacement, 10 years, no questions asked. For the second round of pre-sales, um, I believe what they're doing is like a, a prorated battery warranty of 10 years. So if you click my link and go over there now and uh, do sign up for a pre-sale, um, basically they're, they're gonna guarantee your battery for 10 years, but for every year that it lasts, you're gonna lose about 10%. So if it lasts, 
five years perfectly and then it dies, they're gonna cover 50% of your new battery. If it only lasted two years, they're gonna cover 80% of your battery and so on. I think that makes sense. But that's still a really cool deal um, just to make sure that you get the most out of your batteries when you get them. That might go away. Who knows? At the time of this video, I think that's still a thing. So click the link below for that. My name is Jim with Full Moon Adventure Club. And until the next video, thank you so much for watching and happy camping.